So what was the real wrecking ball of 2013? Well, our next guest says it wasn't Miley, it was Obamacare. And what she says is smashing the hopes of America's youth. That's what Obamacare is up to, and she's going to explain. Ashley Pratt joining us now from the Young America's Foundation. Good morning. Interesting op-ed in the Washington Times there. So explain the rocking ball theory. Well, good morning, Elizabeth, and thank you for having me on today. So essentially, if you look at 2013 and Miley Cyrus's provocative wrecking ball charade, you know, everyone paid attention to that in the mainstream media, but no one was focusing on the real wrecking ball policies of the Obama administration. I mean, youth unemployment is extremely high at 16.3%. Student debt loans at this point are the highest they've ever been. And the national debt is over $17 trillion. So, I mean, when you add all of those things up, it just goes to show you that the policies under the Obama administration are hurting youth nationwide. And yet, you know, Miley Cyrus is what we're focusing on. So the real wrecking ball at the Young America's Foundation, we believe to be, um, obviously, the policies of the Obama administration. Are those numbers behind what you, you call the misery index? That is. Uh, so annually, we release a report called the Youth Misery Index, where we add up um, youth unemployment, student debt numbers, and the national debt per capita, which is everybody's share of the $17 trillion debt. So in 2013, the youth unemployment rate was 16.3%. The student loan average for anyone going to college and graduating was $29,400, the highest it has ever been, and national debt per capita was $52,900. So you add all of those up and you get a total of 98.6, which is the Youth Misery Index, and that is the highest it has ever been, so it's a record high. Sure. And under President Obama, um, since 2009 when he took office, the YMI has gone up 18.1%, making that the highest increase under any president, therefore making Obama the worst president for youth economic opportunity. Not quite the hope and change that I think young people were wishing for, Elizabeth. No, but they are paying attention for sure, and those are scorching numbers. Let me ask you about the Rolling Stone issue here. I mean, you know, they set the bar really high when they gave the Boston bomber a cover girl status there in Centerfold. Um, but now they're urging millennials to fight for communism. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's absolutely ridiculous, first off, because, you know, youth, we're all told right now that we're living in this entitlement society, and that's essentially what it's become. Youth are not willing or, or wanting to take responsibility for their actions. And, you know, for, for some young person in the Rolling Stones there to say that there should be, a, you know, a national bank or a public bank, and then Social Security should be given to everyone and everybody should have a job, um, I'm sorry, but it's called work ethic, and you need to be working hard. And that's something that really hasn't been promoted to young, among young sure. people. But I do think that, you know, given the recent Harvard polling that was done in Obamacare, which has been, you know, extremely uh, a hardship, I would say, for young people nationwide, um, you know, they're honestly seeing that these broken promises that were, you know, kind of given out by the Obama administration don't seem to be on their side anymore. And the Obama administration is perpetuating this idea of an entitlement society where they're saying, you know, young people deserve free health care, free Social Security, like all of this stuff when in fact it is not free and there was a huge sticker shock with Obamacare. So I think young people are now kind of jaded and seeing that, you know, federal government in their daily lives is, is a bit intrusive. And we actually conducted a poll at the Young America's Foundation and we found that 60% of young Americans between the ages of 16 and 24 um, don't agree with government intrusion in their daily lives. So I, it is reflecting what we're seeing. Yeah, absolutely. Ashley Pratt, we thank you for being with us this morning and bringing Thanks for having me. those numbers to us. Stay warm. <laughs> you too.